everybody. My name is Sarah Daly and I'm an Associate Director of Sustainability at Turner and Townsend and I'm one of the team who's working on the Social Housing Retrofit Accelerator and the Social Housing Decarbonisation Fund. So this is the briefing today just to give you an idea if you haven't come across it already what the SHDF is all about and what our SHRA support programme is as well. So the Social Housing Retrofit Accelerator uh, directly help social housing providers to create successful bids. And this is a really important um, aspect of the programme because it was uh, it was very much understood uh, as, as we started to get to this stage with the funding being available, that it's an incredibly complex process for uh, asset managers or energy managers within social housing uh, operations to actually get themselves aligned to uh, the bid requirements for the Social Housing Decarbonisation Fund. So this is a um, basically a fund that the government uh, committed to in the 2019 manifesto uh, that's around 3.8 billion between now and 2030. Uh, but we've just had uh, a bid window closed in 2021, which was for 160 million. And we've now got an announcement of 800 million of that fund being made available between 2022 and 2025. So the reason it's also really important is that this whole programme has been developed with and for the sector. So the people involved, people like myself and my colleagues, uh, we're, we're subject experts. Uh, many of us have actually worked within social housing providers and uh, so therefore we can help um, align you with this. So the particular fund we're talking about with SHDF is only available to housing stock in England and it's in support of major retrofit projects. Uh, the social housing providers, uh, so whether it's a local authority or um, a, a, a private social housing organisation, you can access a range of free support via ourselves at Turner and Townsend, and this is supported by the Greater London Authority and funded by Bays. So local authorities and social housing landlords will be able to apply directly in their own right, or you can be part of a consortium bid. So how are we helping? Well, we've got a number of tools actually um, that, are, that are growing all the time. So we've got a comprehensive knowledge hub, uh, which provides uh, uh, detailed information on, on topic areas for you. So you can uh, go into that on our website. I'll have uh, lots of contact details for you in a moment. And uh, that helps you to understand the sort of key elements uh, that, that you will need in order to put together a good bid and a good programme. Uh, in other resources, we also have um, retrofit programmes, which we're just about to launch, which are um, eight modules, basically eight masterclasses that we've put together in a sequence that will mean that if you actually follow through that, um, that uh, programme, that will help you to, again, get to where you need to be to put together a good uh, bid and uh, run your own internal programmes on retrofit. But we also have um, live webinars, um, on-demand masterclasses, podcasts, blogs, and as we get into bid window times as well, lots of clinics, so lots of opportunity to engage with our experts and to ask questions and to really get to um, grips with the sort of different subjects that you have to understand in order to bid. Uh, there's one-to-one -one support for organisations, which includes a feedback report on your bid preparedness. And that also helps them to identify which of these um, group support mechanisms can help you as well. And there's also consortium forming support available uh, if you want to either identify who you'd like to work with in your local area or for some organisations, they like to partner up with um, other organisations who might be of a similar makeup. Um, so, for example, um, rural housing associations, uh, they might have stock spread all, all over England. Uh, but it might be better for them to form a consortium with other organisations who've got very similar um, aspects to deal with. So the first thing you need to do is our self-assessment, not as onerous as it sounds. It's basically a, a very quick process, probably takes about 15 minutes. And this helps um, you and us really to identify how ready you are to bid for funding. And it indicates where additional preparation may be needed from your side, where there might be gaps in, in knowledge or understanding or um, perhaps data um, that needs to be gathered. And then it's possible to, um, having completed the self-assessment as well, we can identify projects that might be eligible for in-depth and one-to-one support. 
And again, we can allocate some resources around that and give you some feedback to help you again see how you can engage with our programmes. There's a whole range of topics that we that we cover in support. Um, you can see uh, just some of them uh, on the screen there, but uh, in, in terms of individual topic areas, it's probably nearing 30 now. So there's, there's plenty to support you on. And the really good thing about this as well is that a lot of these topics aren't just related to SHDF. They might be uh, to do with any funded projects or indeed to any retrofit project you're doing outside of funding. Um, so it is really about upskilling and reskilling the whole sector. And you might also find that there's topics here that aren't directly relevant to you or your role, but you want to uh, make sure your colleagues know about them. And again, that's really good to get them to register on our website and they can then uh, be kept up to date with all the upcoming content as well. So group support, as we call it, uh, includes a combination, I've touched on this already, I suppose, of, of live events and webinars. Uh, on demand, which is recorded expert masterclasses. So it's essentially the same information that you'd get in a masterclass um, if you were there in the webinar, but obviously in a webinar you're there uh, with the speaker and you get the opportunity to ask questions. Our recorded content is, is just a clean recording of the actual presentation. So obviously you don't get any of the Q&A or any of the event preamble around it. Uh, but we're finding they're really popular because you can obviously on demand uh, watch them when, it, when it's convenient to you. Uh, but it also means that you can pick and choose the topics um, to watch in the sequence that suits you as well. Uh, we also provide roundtable events for bidder support and we have a range of uh, topical podcasts. So the idea with the podcast is that we're trying to look sort of in and around the topics uh, to do with uh, with retrofit so um, that again helps you to, to to understand in a much more sort of discursive way really some of the things some of the challenges or opportunities that the sector might be facing and we'll be developing some blogs too that again we'll, we'll just explore the top topics in a slightly different way a slightly more um, relaxed way perhaps so in terms of one-to-one -one support, uh, on completion of a self-assessment, uh, a bid support manager will arrange a diagnostic call with you and they'll be able to delve a bit deeper into your um, projects, you know, where you are and what, what, you know, what sort of support you might need and that will help us to identify what support we can offer you. And a short feedback report, again, will, will contain bespoke actions. So that's a really important tool for you because it will, if somebody external is, is just assessing where you're um, focus needs to be for your programmes. So in terms of eligibility for the Social Housing Decarbonisation Fund, it's a commitment up to 2030, as we've mentioned, to improve the energy performance of social rented homes. And the actual amounts that get released in each bid window are going to be subject to future spending reviews. So we know at the moment that there's an £800 million commitment, uh, but we don't yet know exactly when those tranches of uh, cash are going to be made available and over what period they will need to be um, used. Uh, however, everything uh, within the competition scope uh, is subject to announcement uh, and all homes must be located within England. So they're the things we know at this stage. Um, all, all social housing owned by registered providers, including private and LA providers, is eligible and this is regardless of the archetype and includes both on and off gas grid. So if you're familiar with some of the other funds, um, you'll be aware that they have actually have quite strict criteria in terms of um, which stock has actually been eligible for the funds. This is much more comprehensive uh, in terms of its uh, applicability to all housing. Uh, and the detailed criteria for future waves, as we said, will be announced um, ahead of each round. So that's obviously quite a, an intricate process in terms of phase negotiating with um, uh, Treasury to um, agree the scope of the funding and the release dates that will apply. So what you need to do now then, uh, complete the self-assessment. Uh, so you can see at the bottom there, we've got uh, the website address. Uh, if you go in there, you can uh, readily see where that uh, is available and that will help us to understand and you to understand uh, where you are in the process. You can scope the opportunity for submitting a bid. So again, begin to understand what sort of things are going to be involved in that and, and who within your organisation needs to um, be part of your stakeholder group. Uh, securing senior level buy-in and budget for potential 
methods is obviously really important. So uh, you might find that actually you're constrained by your ability to uh, fund whatever proportion is required. So in the last big window, it's actually two thirds grant and um, a third from the organisation. We don't know if that's going to be the same going forward, but obviously those are the sorts of conversations you need to be having internally uh, for forthcoming financial years. Um, engaging with potential partners, so people like ourselves, but obviously all of the um, other stakeholders who you might need to work with, really important to get early engagement, and to identify and assign staff and resources to help develop your bids. So the bid itself isn't just something that happens when the application comes through. Um, preparing to bid is something which takes many months to work up to the point at which you are ready to submit. So that's something that we like to really reinforce, that you have to start um, thinking about bid readiness way before bid windows are announced. If you only start the process when the bid window is announced, you probably won't have um, any chance at all of, of actually fulfilling all the criteria within what could be um, an eight week window. So again, really important you think ahead on this. Um, please let us know if there are any additional topics you want us to cover in the programme. So we want to be as um, responsive as we can to the market. We're constantly evaluating what we're doing, uh, what the take up is, what the uh, feedback is during the sessions and after the sessions. Uh, but it is uh, very much we're here to support you. So do please tell us if there's anything else you want. And please do sign up to the um, SHRA newsletter. That will keep you up to date with the news and all support that's available. And again, if there's any other feedback uh, that you uh, wish to give us on the programme in general, then please do. And this is the email address at info at socialhousingretrofit.org.uk. And they'll, um, at, you know, during working days and working hours, there'll always be somebody uh, from the team available to respond to you. So thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.